Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Happy 1st of October. Can you believe it? It's about to be Thanksgiving. We're all about to start hearing Christmas music and eggnog season. I love it. I love it. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Let's get through October first. I hope you all are having an amazing morning and thank you for being here with us. This week is our level two pathways training. If you were with us last week, then you know it was an amazing session where we walked through all aspects of level one and pathways. Well, this week we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I hope you have your notes. I hope you have your pathways base camp open so that you can walk through it with us. We have our amazing pathways champ, pathways champs here who will assist you when we put you in a breakout room to help you with any questions that you may have. But before we get to that, we've got our main course. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our Pathways Chair who will lead us in this session, Toastmaster Latanya McLean. Hi and good morning. How's everybody doing? I hope you're ready for level two. Let's go. Today, we're going to help you maximize the usage of pathways to get the most benefit and value out of this program so it enhances our professional and personal lives as we are all evolving together. So what is Pathways? It is our worldwide educational program. It stores, tracks, and measures our paths journey across five levels. We want to help you optimize your path. Learn to match those Toastmasters objectives, where you have to learn the objectives first, then match them with your work, life, and community life activities. Apply them in real life or in a mock scenario to help you flush out your ideas and then receive the credit for the things you're already doing in and out of Toastmasters. Go ahead and log into your Toastmasters account using your member ID, it will probably be eight digits, or you use your email and password. You go to your welcome menu page here and you'll see your name and then you want to go down to your profile. What happens then is it opens up an overview of what's available to you. For example, it allows you to take a shortcut to go to your base camp. As the base camp manager, if you're the base camp manager, you click that box there. What if you're a dual member? It will list all your clubs in a pick list right here to be a drop down list. It will list one of your clubs and then you click that button and select one of the clubs you're a member of. For example, one of our champions, Linda, is a member of four clubs. North Gwinnett Toastmasters, an advanced club, Toastmasters of Centerville and Toastmasters of Sen uh, Snailville, all the Villes, and then the real Toastmasters of Tucker. So what she'll do is select one of those clubs for which she wants to apply or work under as she's working through her level. Then she'll hit go and go to under that club to off to her transcript. So this will take you, this method will take you to the Pathways homepage. We talked about choosing a path in level one, but today, if you want to access your path, another shortcut is you can click on the arrow up in your path right here or click on the Chevron button over here and go directly to the transcript. This side of things will take you straight to the paths and learning page. On this side, when you hit go, it is to the pathways homepage. Either way, you're gonna get to your curriculum and you will land where you can open up the curriculum. Let me explain something real quick here. The blue bar allows you to see what page you're actually on. Right now we're on the paths and learning page. If you wanted to upload your evaluation form, it would be under ePortfolio, or the blue bar will scroll here to the left for feedback if you want to award a badge, or drop in the dates on the Basecamp profile for your leadership roles in the meeting. Toastmaster of the day, evaluator, timer, those, those 
this is where you plug that in. We're going to proceed to our curriculum. And we'll see that we have five levels. Today, we're focused on level two, learning your style. This is fabulous. Of course, you know me. Get on the schedule. Check your calendar. See what's available, what your available dates are for you to begin your speeches for that meeting in that month. So you can either get a speech credit for that day or get a roll credit, or you could do both. You can get two credits in one as long as they're different, a leadership one and a communication one. And the communication usually are coming from the level projects, okay? And also wanted to point out that the active listening project is really the Table Topics Master role. And in a couple of the paths, it's a mandate for level two, but you can do it whenever. Remember, you can skip around, just submit the levels of completion in order, but you can complete any of the projects across any of the paths across across the five levels. And for the majority of us, level three elective will be the active listening project, okay? Here's what we want to do. We feel inundated with a lot of information from Pathways and from Toastmasters and the extra resources and the website. It is a lot. Take a deep breath. Start with the end in mind. Why did you join? Make sure everyone's on mute, Rod. <laughs> Start with the end in mind. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so what I want to explain here is that, again, we're at the end. If you see yourself at the completion stage, here's what it would look like. So let's say some of you may have dynamic leadership. It is designated with the DL emblem here the letters DL to identify dynamic leadership, as well as effective coaching, EC, EH is engaging humor, IP is innovative planning, LD is leadership development, and so forth, right? Your name, once you complete level one, for example, or level two, once you complete, actually, once you complete level one, that's the way I wanted to explain it, let's say it's visionary communication, you will have your first last name here. There will be a comma. There will be V, C, and one. That represents the path you're on and the level of completion, okay? Now, you're working on level two. Once you complete level two, guess what? V, C, two will appear. Now, that all applies all well and good until you have your DTM, which is great. You want your DTM. My DTM was from the legacy program, so I don't see the changes that are happening. I know they're happening because I completed it and I got the base camp email that, oh, congratulations, you completed it. And then I got Club Central email, where you pushed your award through, blah, blah, blah. But if you have a DTM, these do not, they won't, you won't see it reflected in the changes. Your DTM will stay your DTM. I'm working on a Pathways DTM. It's still gonna be a DTM a Distinguished Toastmaster Award. Okay, so this is going to come in handy later in our discussion. Again, with the end in mind, here's what you're going to complete. When you're done with level two, you will have four projects, three projects done with four task items done, okay? So it's a total of four. We are in agreement this time. Our math is not off. You will complete first project, second project, third project, and submit. You know you're on level two and you have completion. In this case, level three has been completed, so it kind of, you don't see what the real percentage is completing for completing both levels one and two. But the blue bar indicates you're on level two, and this is actually for presentation mastery. I can view my certificate, et cetera. Okay, I just wanted to let you know what's at the end of, that light at the end of the tunnel, because I'm not one to wait on that little persist, that impatience thing is a thing I'm working on in life. So I like to let people know, here's what you're getting in the end. Come on now, let's go ahead and start. So what do you know? Did you know that there are three projects? Because I just told you, but two of those projects are path specific, path specific, plus the intro to mentoring. 
all 11 paths cover the introduction to mentoring project. Upon completion of level two, it will trigger, trigger the Pathways Mentor Program automatically populates to the suggested learning section on your Basecamp homepage. So what do you expect to see in level two? What we're focusing on when we say level two, learning your style, is that you're gonna be focused on understanding how you're effective in conversation with others through active listening, connecting with your audience, cross-cultural understanding, effective body language, knowing your sense of humor, managing your time, understanding how you really communicate, your communication style, your leadership style, and again, introduction to Toastmasters mentoring. Now, you don't have to do all of these. This is a compilation list across all the paths and a mixture of these will apply to each path. So let's look at how that looks. So let's say you're in the active listening path, project. You're learning your style through active listening. This particular project applies to the motivational strategies path, persuasive influence path, team collaboration path in level two. In levels three, it's our elective for the rest of the paths, right? It's gonna cover the difference between hearing and listening and exploring all those ways that listening helps us to build strong, lasting connections. My daughter always says, I always tell her when she's talking to me, I'm, I, I hear you, I hear you. And she always comes back to me to say, but you're not listening. That's cause I'm multitasking and I'm really not the best at in some instances, but that's okay. I'm a Toastmaster, I'm gonna learn it one way or the other. The purpose of active listening is to demonstrate your ability to listen to what others are saying to you. What you wanna do is serve as Table Topics Master in your club meeting. And then as the speaker is speaking, you wanna jot down some notes so you can give a brief response immediately, immediately, after each speaker. That is what the project requires. You're gonna probably, now there's no time specific requirement, but keeping the club's time in mind, I would say minimize your response for each speaker to about 30 to 45 seconds. I think that's what works, what we have found personally in our home club, my home club, because we actually do this project, but we do it a little bit differently. We do a table topics evaluated. We are putting that in the evaluation section. But this project calls for you to do it immediately after each speaker that you call on. Now, you don't want to, you want to avoid repeating exactly what the person said when you're listening and regurgitating what they're saying to you. Instead, what you want to think about is how do you help them understand what they did in the pro in answering the and providing a response, excuse me. So basically what you're saying is you're a mini evaluator for 35 seconds, right? 30 to 45 seconds. And you're integrating the mechanics of public speaking, for example. So the person responds to you and you then respond to them and say, oh, that was a great job. You answered the question that the table that was asked of you. And I like how you did this, that, and the third. That really enhanced your speech. When you had eye contact, you made the audience laugh. That was great, great job. And you got a chance to answer the question or something like that. So you don't say, oh, and you said this. And when you said that and that, unless you're giving feedback that enhanced the speech, okay? You're learning your style also by connecting with your audience. This project applies to the engaging human humor path and the innovative planning path. You're gonna be focusing on different audience types and how to address them effectively. You're practicing the skills needed to connect with an unfamiliar audience. Even though your club members know you, you're gonna be delivering 
the topic that is unfamiliar to what you normally do to the majority of your club members in a five to seven minute speech. And then you're watching their reactions to see what adjustments you need to make in order to maintain that engagement. So that's what you'll be doing. And avoid, again, avoid just recapping the content that you just learned about how to do that. You want to demonstrate that you know how to do that. Same thing here, learning your style through cross-cultural understanding. This one only applies to strategic relationships. So you're focusing on understanding the cultures with which you identify uh, mostly and those impacts of stereotypes associated with your cultures and others. And you're going to identify your own cultural identities and stereotypes that impact others' perception of you. You're going to use the resource defining your cultural identity, complete that. And then within the five to seven minute speech, you're going to talk about the cultures with which you mostly identify the personal impact of those stereotypes commonly associated with those cultures. Again, don't recap what they what the project taught you. You want to Take that experience and create your own story of what has happened to you and how you demonstrated that, right? Effective body language. Looks like this one only applies to the presentation mastery project, a uh, path, excuse me. The project requires that you recognize body language when used publicly in a setting and how you use those gestures to enhance the speech content. Now, last week we talked about when I was saying that you're either going to enhance or distract from your speech and your audience ability to listen to you if you use too many body gestures, okay? You wanna deliver that speech with awareness of your intentional or unintentional body language and refine that how you use nonverbal communication when delivering a speech. You're going to practice with the devices that allow you to see yourself. So an evaluator is the mirror in the club, along with the timer, the awe counter, and grammarian. They are your mirrors in the club in the feedback section. It is that third section of the meeting. This case, you're going to be practicing by yourself. You're going to use your own mirror, your own visual recorder, and then watch the techniques and how you deliver your speech, right? You're going to have that five to seven minute speech ready that lends to the your self-expression and how you move and your movements and gestures. And you're going to practice, 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 and then deliver that in the club. Well, you need to know your sense of humor. What is your style? What is your humor? Engaging humor will focus on that project Understand what makes you laugh and how you share that with an audience. You want to begin developing a collection of humorous stories and present a speech that includes humor. Humor. So what you don't want to do or what you want to avoid doing is being a comedian. So the thing about comedians is that they string along different humorous stories, different punchlines. That's not what we're after here. This particular one, if you want to prepare for the humorous speech contest, this is the one you study, okay? Because you got to deliver a five to seven minute speech of your choice that incorporates at least one story or antidote that entertains or injects humor into the presentation. So what you want to think about is that story that is humorous throughout and at points, but it still is a flow to the story. Think about your favorite movie. It's still one thing. It's still one thing. So then it has humorous points throughout. That is what you're writing. Okay. The leadership development project, like Lena told me last week, is the one about managing your time. This is the one I was asking Lena to help me with. Like, which one was that one again? It is leadership development. You will be focused on management time management strategies and how you employ them in your daily lives. You're going to be keeping a time and task log for the time required task. You're going to present that in a five to seven minute speech. And then again, don't recap what they taught you how to maintain time management strategies, but you want to incorporate that in real life experience, okay? Learning your style by understanding your communication style. So this these paths are 
dynamic leadership, effective coaching, motivational strategies, presentation mastery, and visionary communication. So the goal here, I think a lot, this one trips a lot of people up. I've, I've seen presentations and they're almost identical and they shouldn't be identical. People are recapping the project content. So what your goal here is, is to learn about the variety of communication styles and then understand how they impact others, the interactions with others. The purpose here is to learn about the different communication styles and then identify your primary style. You're gonna complete the questionnaire, discover your communication style. You're gonna get your five to seven minute speech together about how your style has had impacts on your professional and personal lives and your relationships. And you're gonna detail a time that best describes a scenario that fits this project when you've used your communication style, whichever one it is, to remedy a problem or help someone. You're going to, in other words, show those concepts through your actions. Let's take a look at what that looks like, what people have been doing. So here's the project in essence. It shows that I've scored a four on supportive, four analytical, direct, and initiating. It doesn't say that you're one or the other. It's just saying that in the scenario when you were at the grocery store and they didn't have a red cabbage or the purple cabbage and they had the green one and you wanted the red one, how do you go about asking the stock clerk for a batch of cabbages that you're looking for? Well, you're going to be supportive and directive. So you may integrate two of those methods to then persuade them to get you what you need. But people are summing up what these are. And I think that is in order for them to understand it. I'm not sure. But again, you want to think of a time that incorporates a, an experience, a time that incorporates the concepts of these times when you were supportive, you were, had to be analytical, you had to be direct yet gentle in delivering how they're going to be fired. <laughs> if you're in HR, you have to do this all the time. You're trying to be supportive, you're trying to be direct at the same time. How do you balance the two? So what you want to focus on is a five to seven minute story or an event or occasion that you have had to use these styles in communication to deliver and get to your point. I hope that's more clear. All right, same thing with understanding your leadership. I think people are doing the same thing, but all but two of the paths, it applies here for understanding your leadership. This is designed to introduce you to the different leadership styles, help you to identify identify your primary leadership style or styles. You're gonna answer that survey question about your, discovering your leadership style. Get your five to seven minute story together to share some aspect of when was a time that you used your style to make an impact on a group or a person that really adapted in the situation that required your style, okay? Introduction to Toastmasters mentoring. All the paths have to do this. Just like we all have to do icebreakers, we all have to do the introduction to Toastmasters mentoring. This is great because we're already mentoring new baby Toastmasters. As they come in, we're helping them and we're holding them until they wean us off and they can walk on their own. So we have to learn to be the most ineffective mentors to make sure that our people are getting what they need. But in this project, you provide the time when you were the mentee. You were the protege. What impact did that mentor have on you? And you describe that in a five to seven minute story of how that has impacted your life. I was listening to Leslie. Leslie's a part of our, one of our, she has several clubs she's a member of. She's a multi-dual member, <laughs> like many of you on this call. And she was describing how her tennis coach in high school made such a huge impact on her. She then told us about three different times that that teaching, those lessons of life, taught her how to get along in life and cope. 
So she listed the time she was in college and the transition from high school to college, and then the time in college, the time post-college. So she had her three points or three occasions in which the impact occurred. That is what you want to focus on when you're doing this project, okay? Listen, a mentor is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you can see within yourself. Isn't that usual though? And it help, and then they help us bring it out of you or they help to bring it out of you. That's by Bob Proctor. Here's what the mentor program looks like. So there are one, two, three, four, five task items, four projects, hint to the wise, there are really only two speeches in here. Here is a document that you read. Once you're done, you launch it, activate, read it. You're done. Mark it off as complete. You get your check mark, move to the next document. I think it's only like one page in that one. I don't think this one is more than two pages. Launch, activate it, read it. You don't even have to do anything else. Check it off. You're done. You get your check mark. Here's the meat of the soul. Here's the meat of the project here, these two. What you need to know is you need two people to mentor, at least two people. One, you will be assisting short term. I would say you can define, define the scope of time as level one. That is your goal. We're going to get through level one together. Okay, hand in hand. There you go. You're going to deliver that five to seven minute speech. You're going to deliver the speech. The speech is about your experience of being their mentor. Okay. Then you have six months, a six month mentorship term here in the advanced mentoring. You're going to be assisting that person that is really having a hard time. That person is have, have panic attacks, they have high anxiety, and they need to go slow, really slow. And this will allow you to use the resources that the Pathways Mentor Program offers to really help guide them effectively. When you're done, you're going to present the experience in a story, five to seven minutes after the six month term, put yourself on the schedule. And then once you're done, you can submit it for approval. The base camp manager will submit. You will submit it. Let the base camp manager know you're submitting it on the, whichever club you're a member of. Make sure when you, before you submit this, if you're a dual member, go back to where we were at first when we were going to log in as a different club. Pick the club. You want this one to receive credit. It doesn't really apply to the DCP, so it's not really, really a big deal. But it's just something to consider if you're a member, a dual member, especially of different districts. I think it matters when you're in different district. Okay? We'll answer any questions about that if you have. It will come back completed after the base camp manager approves it in base camp. And then the base camp manager, typically the VPE, the vice president of education, will push it through Club Central for credit, okay? Here's some tips I want you to know about the Pathways Mentor Program. So the Pathways Mentor Program does not apply towards the DCP credit. It is the Distinguished Club Program to get you to be a club distinction of President's Distinguished, Select Distinguished, or Distinguished. We're trying to get all the clubs at least five points. This does not apply. This is like a side program, right? This does not count towards completing a path. It is not a level. It does not count as a level. This does not count towards your DTM award. It is not a precursor or prerequisite for the DTM. Your Distinguished Toastmaster Award is the highest level of completion. What it does do, we do push it through as base camp manager to get it approved and processed through Club Central, but it displays as an award on the district reports. Yay, you completed something else. Kudos to you and you get another badge. And it counts towards triple crown. So let's say, like, I'm struggling with that level three in presentation mastery. I think it's managing a difficult audience, whichever one I'm working on. Anyway, it's a managing a difficult audience. And I, I don't like that project. I'm really not friends with it just yet. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm massaging it. But since I didn't finish that one and I want my triple crown because I like my swag, I'm going to go ahead and finish the Pathways Mentor Program. You can only complete it once ever. Once it's done, it's done. It's in the completed 
archive. And then I can get my triple crown because I finished level one and I finished level two. And guess what? The Pathways Mentor will tip it right over its triple crown. It also can count towards your super achiever. So let's say you didn't finish level five, but you finished levels one, two, three, and four. You need five completed awards and the triple, this Pathways Mentor Program would be your fifth one without a path being completed. Plus, you've already mentored the two people you need as a super achiever. Boom, you now are a super achiever. Cool, isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Here are the documentation of the resources that are in the Pathways Mentor Program. You will have the protege self-assessment to give to them when you first start mentoring. They have the, you have the protege success plan. You have help with the communication tracking log. You can track all your conversations and what you did. So you don't have to log that here in the brain. I know you have a lot going on. Then mentoring evaluation form for the mentor. So you're evaluating each other. Did I do a good job? Give my evaluation. I give an evaluation to you as a protege you are actually tracking in the advanced mentoring program, the goal check form on a monthly basis. Then you wanna get ready for your five to seven minute speech when you complete your Pathways Mentor Program. So that's the evaluation form you give your evaluator when you're doing your five to seven minute speeches. Okay, so there are two speeches you have to do in the program. I'm gonna give you some additional resources. I created some six-week plans that will help you to give you some motivation or help you to inspire your mentee, give them some structure, and give them some momentum that they're going to need. And we also, thank you, Rod have and Marcia, have developed the Pathways YouTube channel. So make sure you like and subscribe. That's the Building Social Media Presence for Me project. That's we I've never done that before. Okay. This is our six week plan. This will give some structure, help a person move through fluently through each of the levels. If you put it in just a short six week plan and it's not inundating the person like, oh, I gotta do all of this, but really it's not that much. Okay, so meeting number one, these are meeting one, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh, I skipped the number. I'm going to explain that in a second. So let's say they come in as a visitor. Your person comes in as a visitor first and they are visiting a couple of times. Well, give them a role. Let them start with the all counter role. Once they become a member, give it to them again for credit. It will be a leadership skill that they're learning. When they're done, you apply your date under the Basecamp profile. And this path is presentation mastery. For their second meeting, move them up to icebreaker. No problem. You're kind of alternating leadership role, communication role, leadership role, communication role. <laughs> so then you can put that and apply that to level one. Let's say they serve as table topics master. I get a, a new member when they convert from a visitor to go ahead and be the table topics master right away because that's easier than answering the question. They always can ask the question. You just let them follow the script and how you return and give control back to the Toastmaster of the day, et cetera. So in meeting three, there are two credits here. One is the base camp profile credit. You log the date for being the Toastmaster that upstate that date. And then this will apply to either your level two for those couple of paths that it applies to, or for the rest of us, the level three our active listening project that actually counts on the communication side because it's one of those level projects, okay? And then move them on quickly to the writing of speech with a purpose and then you help them develop that on the communication side for their level one. And then give them a break and let them be the speech evaluator because that's required. Remember we talked about those three under evaluation and feedback last week? It counts towards both. In this case, both. A dual credit is a communication credit and a leadership credit under the level one project and the base camp, you log the date. And the last, well, it's not the last speech, but the six week speech here is the body gestures and vocal variety speech under the communication skill under level one. 
Here's another six week plan, meeting seven. So they're gonna go ahead and finish up level one in the seventh through ninth weeks. First speech, under evaluation feedback, under communication skill, level one, and then serve as a general evaluator. Definitely wanna help them understand how to do that under the leadership side, base camp profile, update that date, update your pathways tracking form too, don't forget that. And then for this one on week nine, you're either going to redo the first speech or do a completely second speech. Well, who wants to do an extra speech? I'm just going to take the evaluation that I got from the last speech and improve it and redo it. Your 10th week is being Toastmaster of the day. That's a leadership role. Update the date in the base camp profile your 11th week. It's understanding your communication style. Here, I want to let you know, <laughs> engaging humor does not have this option. Engaging humor does something different, knowing your sense of humor, okay? So that you would just replace this one with that one, okay, for engaging humor. For those of you who have it, it's a communication project nonetheless. Update your level two. See there, you're already done with level one. This is so cool. Okay, and then you can be the timer. Great, great, great. So that's a quick 12 weeks done successfully. Don't forget, a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. So make sure once they complete their levels or did something on the list, you say, hey, try that and this and the third. Make sure you go in in your club and award their badge. They will see that they were innovative or inspirational. That's great. You will see your badge when you started it and activated it. You will also see the completion badge for your Pathways Mentor Program. And you will see your level two badge. I like badges. Just keep giving them to me. They make me feel so good. When, what's the benefit of completing all of these things? Well, you and your club benefit in multiple ways here. You complete your levels, your DTMs, and the MAP Pathways mentor programs. The base camp manager will push them all through their system in the base camp, and then make sure it's recorded on the district level and club central so that we can all see the recognition flow in to the DCP, the D Distinguished Club Program. So the processed levels and DTMs will hit the DCP plan. And the Pathways Mentor Program counts towards the incentive programs. Super Achiever, Triple Crown. So we need four members to focus on getting their level two for our two points for the club's DCP program. Remember, your vice president of education is counting on you so she can help build up these six points for the club, she or he. Here's what that looks like. Here's your DCP. I wanted to also let you know that, uh, I'll tell you that in a second. So here's your two points that you need to do for people. Here's what's needed for people to hear for a point. We're lacking one. We have one to the good. And two here. We're working on the other two. Okay. This is what you have to do to be distinguished. And this is what the club has done so far as of the, you know, up to date. It stays up to date within 24 hours of submission. These are the 10 possible points that you can achieve. You only really need nine to be present as distinguished. Six is the majority of the nine. The other thing I wanted to point out, I heard in the, when we were doing TLI, people don't know how to figure out what division they're in, area they're in, what district we are, it's all right here. We are in Region 8 in the world. Region 8 covers a Southern Hemisphere on the map, like Florida and Alabama. I think it goes all the way to Mississippi. I'm not sure about that. I know it is Alabama, Tennessee, et cetera. So that's Region 8. We are half of Georgia. <laughs> other Georgia people on the other side of I-85 East, of I-85 are in District 14. We are split into two now. We are District 44 on the west side of, west side of 85. 
We happen to be, my home club is in Division C. My home club is in Area 32. So when people are saying, what division am I in? I am in Division C because my DCP has it already updated. Okay. I want to just say thank you so much to our champions that are on this call and that are not here. Thank you so much for all your help in compiling this information and making sure that all of our fellow Toastmasters really understand how to maximize their usage of pathways. Here are some resources for you. If you are interested in learning more about Pathways, we have our YouTube channel. Thank you, Rod. He, you go ahead and like and subscribe. So as the new videos come out, you will be notified. You can also get information from the District 44 website. And I've put some credits here to where I've gotten some other information from. And if you want to join us as a Pathways champion, go ahead and put in the chat box real quick. I am a champion or I am a champ. Other than that, I will take your questions now and I wanna actually issue a challenge to you. I would like to ask if you would like to become a champion for your home club, send me a direct chat message to say, I want to be a champion of my home club. Here's my contact information so I can reach out to you today and let you know what you need to do next. Other than that, that is my time. Back to you, Rod. And thank you so much for coming today. Any questions? Binta. Thank you. That was an excellent presentation. <clears throat> I was eating. That's why I was off camera, but I heard you. Oh, that's okay. You, you didn't save me any food. <laughs> I had anything to eat. I had two swallows. <clears throat> yeah, a little late with my breakfast. That's okay. So my question is, I really like the additional resources that you provided. Uh, the one in particular for the new member guide, is that available through Toastmasters World Headquarters or do we get that directly from you? You mean the six-week plan? Yes, the six-week plan. I made that up. I, oh, I, can, I, I can email it to I can email it to you. That is a great resource. I, I think it, it would be really helpful to our VPEs and our VPNs. Okay. Uh, see if I can figure out where I stored it. <laughs> I would drop it in the chat. Would you like for me to, I'll send you my email. If yeah, you put it in the direct chat. Email. So when I hit the save the chat thingy, I can have it. Okay. What'd you say, Lena? Was that Yanni? Yeah, uh, I just say that I uploaded the six week plan, which was included in this pathways level presentation on the chat box. Oh, thanks. Okay, cool. You you did the exit. How did you get the exit? <laughs> Thank you. I'll find the Excel one here before we go. Um, any other questions? And get that to you, Bingta. Okay. You put put. Make sure you direct chat me your email so I can get that to you. How many of you thought that was helpful in addition to being to and friend? By do the raise your hand thingy on the, what's that thing called? The reaction button. <laughs> okay, cool. I knew I was going to mess that up, Kelmi, because, <laughs> okay, cool. All right, good. All right, so go ahead and email. There's another question in the chat that. Um, oh, it is? Okay, great. It was sent privately. I think she may have meant to send it to everyone, but the question is, oh, let me see. where can we find the chart for the mentee? What'd you say, Fran? Which mint? Which chart? Trying to figure out what chart for the mentee. Rona, if you don't mind taking yourself off mute and providing a little bit of clarification to your question, that would be great. Thank, thank you, Rod. She already answered it for um, Lena. Okay. Put the link inside. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it. Well, I better go over here and figure it out myself and find it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't think anybody would actually like that little thing. Okay, cool. Let me go over here. Uh, let's see. Escape would help me. Can't get out the presentation. Escape. Okay. All right. I'm listening, though, whatever the next question is. I like when you had the slide as to learning your learning style and what to expect. Because a lot of times when you're looking at your path, Sometimes you don't look all the way through your path. 
and you spelled out some of the modules and what to expect, like active listening, connecting yeah. with the audience, cultural under cost cultural understanding, effective body language. And sometimes if we don't look ahead in our past, we don't know exactly what to expect. And I exactly. think that you gave us that prompt in looking ahead and what to expect. I thoroughly enjoyed that slide. Thank you. Did you think that knowing, so are you saying you knowing all the paths that have all the things was helpful? Yes. Okay. It gives mm -hmm. me a better understanding of which path that I can or that I want to select for my next path. Okay. I, I found the file. <laughs> I was like, where did I put that thing? Let's see. Okay. I, I, okay. Ask the next question because I want to keep the meeting moving forward as I try to multitask. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. We have Lee Ice that's waiting on a question. Oh, I messed up. God darn it. I, I was supposed to put it in everyone. Okay, let me do it again. All right. I, ben said, I think I sent it just to you. Let's see. Do it again. Boom, boom. Okay, let me know y'all got that. Did you get that Excel file? It's in the chat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Whew. Open it up. Make sure it's the right one. I hope. <laughs> I was like, where is that thing? Okay. All right. What was the question? I'm sorry. You know, Lee, you can go ahead test. with your question. Lee. I'm sorry. Was that Gwen? Not, okay, Lee. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that was for earlier. The raised okay. hand was for earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was answering probably my question or something. Okay. Hey, Gwen, what's your question? You're on mute. Uh oh, she disappeared. She okay, you, you were talking about profile, basic profile, and how to go to get your profile. So each week, as I get through a meet, I need to put that in my profile. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Maybe. Like for if you're all counter or timer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right now, if you haven't been doing it already, you have to update the date. So before when we first migrate into pathways, it wouldn't allow us to go to the next pro the next level if we didn't do the requirement for the meeting role. I think they fixed that in the background and that's why nobody knows what to do. <laughs> it's like they prevented me from moving forward. Now everybody just skipping the whole thing. So what you want to do is not trip up later in the levels. Did that make sense? You want to keep it updated. Okay, I got that point because you can use the community and leadership role. So if I do like an R count and I do, okay, another an R count of grammar, is that still as a community role? Let me clarify something that you're saying, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. So you're okay. saying communication and leadership. So here's the thing. I want you to separate those two for now for the purpose of ex explaining what you need to do. So on the leadership side, wait, let's, let's start easier. On the communication side, the projects are dictated to you through your levels, icebreaker, speech evaluator, eva what's another one? In communication style, leadership style, uh, writing a speech with a purpose. Those are your communication skills. Make sense? Yes. Now, when you're in a meeting, these are roles that you do. Ta table topics, master, toast, master of the day. Have you served as these roles before? Yes. Okay. So when you served as ta table topics, master, was it this year or last year? Oh, that was this year. Oh, yeah, for sure. That date, you get that date from when you were that role and you plug it into your base camp profile. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> and the one when you were all counter, were you were all counter? Not even all counter. Not lately, I haven't. Lately, but you have been since yes. it's been in Pathways. Well, yes. then, whenever that was or whenever it's coming up, you can plug that date. Now, if you are not interested in being the all counter again because you only get credit credit once for all the roles one round of all these roles one credit the rest of the time we're just doing it anyway right right but you want to get your credit while you're getting your credit so you can go back into the minutes or go to your calendar where you were at the meeting or go to if you use free toast host go figure out when you were these roles 
Grammarian, timer, all counter, general evaluator, table topics, master, toast, master of the day. Okay, when you were those seven roles, I think it's seven in the club. Somebody correct me. If you were all those roles or whatever you were, update your base camp manager of the dates that you were. Now, you cannot do two leadership roles in one meeting. You can go to a different club and do a different leadership role, and it may appear to be the same date. But as long as you were in two different club meetings, you can get credit. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Did that clear up your questions? Yeah. Do, is the other question, how do you update it? Okay. Just go to profile and just put it in, right? Well, you have to get into the edit mode. So your base camp champion will walk you through that one and would like for you to share your screen when you get into the breakout sessions. Okay. Okay. So whoever has Miss Gwen, please help her get make sure she has those updated or how, learn how to update them. All right. What was the other question? I thought I saw one more hand. If not, hearing none, we'll answer the rest of the questions in our breakout sessions. This has been great. Again, if you're interested in being a Pathways champion, we're trying to spread this message across District 44 and make sure that our members are maximizing the usage of Pathways. If you want to be a champ to help learn how to do that, put, your, put in the chat, I am a champ, direct chat me what your contact information is and I will get back to you shortly. Other than that, that's my time. It's been a pleasure today to present this information to you. Back to you, our program quality director, Rod. All right. Thank you, Latanya, for another super amazing walkthrough of Pathways Level 2. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Well, at this time, what are we going to do we are going to open up the breakout rooms. There will be a Pathways champ in each breakout room who will assist you, answer any questions that you may have. Um, they're there for you to, if you wanna walk through the level, if you wanna do a little bit more in-depth review of it, they are there for your assistance. So please take advantage of this opportunity. Of, please take advantage of this one-on-one -on -one opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.